talked about conception and the period of the zygote, we're going to move into perhaps one of the most exciting stages in pregnancy, and that is the period of the embryo. And so the embryo is very different from a zygote. Zygote was really a cluster of cells that were not specialized. In the stage of the embryo, we see a lot of specialization happening, and we see a lot of the support structures coming online. For instance, we know that there is this thing known as the placenta. The placenta is the organ that attaches to the uterine wall and communicates with the parent. The placenta is essential. It's where the nutrients come from. And so the, the placenta absorbs the nutrients and brings the nutrients to the offspring via the umbilical cord. And so that's really important, but it also takes away waste products. Important to understand, the offspring is not defecating or having a bowel movement in the womb. And instead, waste products are being removed via the umbilical cord and then being taken away through the placenta. The placenta also plays a very important role in filtering out potentially dangerous uh, chemicals. So because of that, we can find things like traces of arsenic in the placenta or mercury or lead. It's gonna be very small amounts and the placenta cannot filter out everything, but just like our kidneys or our livers, it is a filter. Now the placenta, the umbilical cord and the embryo are in a larger structure known as the amniotic sac. So the amniotic sac I've sort of drawn here is a bit of a big blue bubble. This is this watery cushiony sac that allows the embryo to sort of float. It's not just laying flat. It's, it's this little cushion that allows them to float. And the embryonic sac will get big and big and big until the end of the pregnancy where the fetus at that point will then pretty much fill the whole amniotic sac. And when a person's water breaks, that's really the amniotic sac rupturing at the end of a pregnancy. So it's important to understand the roles of the placenta, the umbilical cord, amnion, and the amniotic sac in supporting the growth of an embryo or fetus. Now in the embryo, we tend to not count the stages of the embryo in days like we did in the zygote. Instead, we look at the embryo in terms of weeks and we look at the changes over time in the number of weeks. But before we get to the weeks, it's important for us to understand how we went from a ball of balls to this. And that is really through the process known as gastrulation. So gastrulation is really when specialization really kicks off. And if we remember the germ disc, the germ disc just looked like a little dark orange spot on the side of our yellow uh, blastula in the last section. And so what's going on here is that little kernel, that little germ disc that might germinate into a new offspring, it starts to change. What we have here is it was originally kind of looking like a little bit of a thumb or a little bit of a cone. And at the very tip of it, we start to see it has three layers stacked on top of each other. And so we have a blue layer on top, a yellow layer in the middle, and a red layer on the bottom. And these are all the same shape, just stacked on top of each other. And so what happens now is it starts to roll up. So it's almost like if you took, so it's almost like if you had a piece of paper and then you start to roll up the piece of paper in the middle. So you start to take it and you just roll it up. And so what's going on here in gastrulation is these three layers are rolling together. And so now they're making a bit of a bubble or a bit of a tube. And the tube is, we're seeing here that the blue, what's going to become the ectoderm is on the outside of the tube. What's going to become the middle layer is the mesoderm. And what's going to become the inner layer is the endoderm. The ectoderm and endoderm sound the same, but the one with the C, ecto, is the outside and endo is the inside. And what we find is the cells that start off with on the blue side, they're gonna become the outer side of our body. They're gonna become things like our skin and our hair and our peripheral nervous system. The yellow is gonna become our middle layer, which is mainly our muscles and our bones. And then the red, well, that's gonna be our most inner layer, like our cardiovascular and our central nervous system. And in fact, our central nervous system is really where it's gonna be a major role in this next step of development. So gastrulation is really important, especially when we think about what goes on in week three of our gestational age. So in week three, we're, the embryo is basically limited to a tube-like structure. It almost looks like a bit of a, a test tube, which is why I drew a little test tube next to it. What's going on here is the embryo is now not shaped like a ball, but it almost looks like an earthworm. And in this tube, we're developing our neural tube, our central nervous system, what will become our brainstem, our spinal column is starting to develop. And so inside this 
three-dimensional pink tube. We're gonna have those three layers of the endo, meso, and ectoderm. And we're also growing some really interesting other things. We're actually growing gills and we're growing a tail. Now you might realize, wait, where's, where's my tail? I don't know where my tail is or where's my gills? Well, you don't have the gills and tail when you're born at full term, but we do have gills and tails when we are embryos. And the reason behind this is if you compare the embryonic development of a human, of a sheep, of a frog, of a fish, we look very similar at comparative stages of our embryonic development. And it's just what we know as a vestigial structure. It's proof of evolution. The fact that humans grow tails is because we follow the same steps as many non-human species. It made evolutionary sense for other species to grow tails and gills at this point. So we also grow tails and gills at this point. It doesn't seem to hold us back. It doesn't seem to hinder us. So we have a tail and we have some gills that are usually little lines up around the top where our head will be. And in terms of the size, the size at this point in time of the embryo tends to be roughly the size of one sesame seed. As we move into week four, we see some drastic differences, lots of intense specialization going on. In fact, in the past week, we've now gotten a new start of a very special organ known as our eye. Now, just for comparison's sake, our eye at week four in our gestational age is not at all similar to what our eyes will look like postnatally. It starts off very simple. And so it's just a little tiny light sensor, and it's really about the size of a poppy seed. And we now have little buds that will start off to be our arms and legs. Our tail's a little bit longer at this stage too. So our organs are coming online, and at this point, we're roughly the size of a lentil. So those little green things are indeed lentils. So we don't look quite humanoid yet at this point. At week five in our embryonic development, our tail is starting to recede a little bit, it's starting to go away now, and we're developing things like kidneys and our mouth and our tongue. Doesn't quite have the same mouth shape we would expect to see, but we're starting to get some components there. And we're roughly the size of a blueberry. Then at week six in our embryonic development, we can see now our brain grew quite a bit. We have way more structure in our skull area, and we're also starting to get eyelids. So our eyes are starting to change shape. They're becoming much more shaped like how we would expect. We're also getting little buds that would originally start off to being at the start of our nose and the start of our lips. But you can also see the buds that were once our arms have now extended, and now we also have little buds starting off our fingers and our hands. Our legs are also starting to get longer. And we're roughly the size of a kidney bean or a coffee bean at this stage. And then at week seven, we can see now our brain is starting to grow. This is when researchers can first find the start of major neurogenesis. This is when brain cells start to grow. And when a person typically counts themselves as nine weeks pregnant is when the embryo is seven weeks old in terms of gestational age. And this is when the first brain cells can be found. Now, at this point, we're also seeing the buds that were our little legs, they've gotten longer. And I realize I'm only giving my embryo three fingers and three toes, um, just due to artistic liberties here. And, uh, but we are starting to get little buds to show you so far our toes. You can actually see toes and fingers at this point. You can see our spine is quite more flexible and we don't quite have the right portions yet. And we're roughly the size of a grape. And the last week in our embryonic development is week eight. At this point, we're getting a lot more growth in our head. Our head is taking up a much bigger portion of our body than anything else. But important to see our legs and arms are growing quite a bit. And we are seeing a little bit of hinges where our shoulders, our elbows, our knees, and our ankles will be. And so we are seeing some complexities. Now, just for comparison's sake, look how complex an adult's elbow or knee is. And at this stage, they are not as complex. They are quite small, quite rudimentary. And at this size, we're about the size of an acorn or a walnut. And so we are getting bigger. Now it's important to understand here that if there is any genetic atypicalities that may lead to very drastic development where an individual's body may not develop in a way that'll sustain life, this is when a miscarriage will happen. The reason why miscarriages tend to happen most often in the embryonic stage is because if somebody has the wrong number of chromosomes or an allele that's drastically going to change their body where perhaps an essential organ will not develop properly, this is when the embryo no longer becomes viable for life and where a miscarriage would happen. 
It's important to stress that most miscarriages are not due to anything the parent did. It's just due to many possible genetic atypicalities that just cannot sustain life. And this is why the miracle of life really is a miracle. There's so much that can go wrong in this stage of the embryo.